Okay, this really, when I was thinking and praying through, how do I wrap up uh, 21 days of mental spring cleaning? I think, I feel like I have so much to say, and yet it's so very basic. So, and as I mentioned several times throughout our 21 days together, remember, this is a spring cleaning, this isn't a demo project. So the Oops. the temptation to really dive in and just do a lot of emotional healing work, maybe, um, or maybe not, or just really dig, 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 it's, it, it's there. But I, I want to just remind you all that when we spring clean, it's just clearing out clutter, clearing out things that are just mucking up the place, right? Like if I look around my home and I'm looking around now and the thing going, it, it is clean, right? Because wouldn't that be funny if it was a disaster behind me and you guys are like, maybe you should take care of your house first. Um, but as you look around, like I see some a few bags there that have to go to either Goodwill or half price books or homeschooling books. And I'm sitting here going, I don't know what to do with them because they're very specific to my family and I'm not sure who would want them. So I, they're sitting there. Spring cleaning in this space would be getting that out and just deciding. And if I can't make a decision, then just throw it in the trash, right? So it's choosing, it's just deciding. <clears throat> Pardon me. This is not serving me anymore. This isn't helping me feel peaceful about my physical space, right? We do that with our oils, our essential oils. We make sure we have all the cute little organizers. And some of us tend to look at the organizers and go, those are so great. And we don't do anything with them. That's the camp I sit in some days, because you, if you've sat with me in any of my classes, you'll know I always have about 20 oils just dotted around my desk here. And I have this cute organizer over here. Some of you get your oil organizers and you have like, you weirdly color-coded and alphabetized those people. I'm just like, you're my hero. Um, and then there's the, the in-between where you do alphabetizing or you just color-coded whatever, but it's organized. Okay, so it's the same thing with our minds. For 20 days so far, you have chosen to walk through just a few digging in, like, let's get rid of this. Okay, let's keep that. Let's change this up. Let's throw a fresh coat of paint mentally. But today's the day to decide. And I realized as I'm saying this, I'm going, okay, that's why I have so much to say to you all, and it's all very basic, is because I watched a world in 2020 completely just go upside down and topsy-turvy. I saw people fight over the dumbest things and die on hills that I'm like, what? That doesn't even make sense. And I realized it's because this was already a, a disaster, just messy anyway. And then you throw this big ball of trigger on top of it. We don't know what to do with it. And I share that with you because what you need to understand is I know people get frustrated with others and we think they should, we should, whatever, whatever. But what you need to understand is when somebody is in a mess, right? Whether it's a physical mess or it's a mental mess, many times those people just shut down and they just go through life and they do just do the day to day. So I've talked to different people over the last year and it's like, well, I don't understand why they just don't do it. And I've even said, I lived in Massachusetts, Massachusetts invented America. I didn't understand why, why weren't we, what, why, I don't understand. Like the Boston Tea Party, anyone, you guys remember? But what I grew to understand is that it just, that was just too hard. It's just like, you know what? Okay, you want me to do whatever? Okay, fine, I'll do it. It just becomes too difficult. And so when I, when I do a, a series, a 21-day interval on mental spring cleaning, my intention is, hey, let's sweep some leaves. Let's blow off the cobwebs. It's not too hard. I'm going to help. Right? Like imagine me with my broom coming to your house and sweeping off your porch. And then we sit there with a cup of tea and we just enjoy the outside together. 
And so today on day 21, I'm asking you guys to choose. And not, you know, not like in, in scripture where it says choose life or death. I am actually asking you, please choose life. Please choose to walk a path of mentally cleansed, of being mentally cleansed. Please don't take this as just another 21 days of, oh, that was fun. That was interesting. As you spring clean your home, there are times you're like, you know what? I need to make a note, and I think I need to actually redo this bathroom. I might want to redo, like if there's some holes in the walls, right, from kids nailing projects or whatever, we need to speckle that, and we need to come back and take care of it. So this is the choice I'm asking you guys to make. So don't allow, please do not allow mess to descend on your mind ever again. I'm asking you guys to make a few choices. I, I don't know how many I'm going to say. I'd say you know, number one through three. I think it's going to be three, but we'll see what the Lord does, right? But the first thing is do not allow mess to descend ever again on your mind. Make that line in the sand. I shared in yesterday's uh, interval reading if you had a chance to look at it, when I clean my home, when I when my children were much younger, and even now, which is weird, I have you know eight to nineteen living here. Um, but when they were little, I would think, ah, oh, can you guys eat outside forever, please? Um, because you know it didn't matter. Like the shoes, it's fine. They I just go to your room. But it was like the crumbs, right? They'd eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I think, how do you get crumbs with just peanut butter and jelly? And it's or then the sticky hands, and I think, oh, what was it all for? But I obviously didn't do that. I would just gently encourage, like, it's a beautiful day. Don't you want to sit by the pool? Or like, now, don't you want to go by the lake? Don't you want to hear the birds? And with children, or with a spouse, or a roommate, or wherever you're at, or dogs, it's a little unrealistic to think there's never going to be mess again. But with our minds, you guys, there's actually no excuse for mental mind mess to be allowed to be heaped on us. Now, what we do with our thoughts, that's on us. That's totally on us. And some days I'm better at it than others. But what I mean, do not allow someone else's mess or anything to, to descend on you and create a mess. Don't do that. And there's a couple sub points to that one point some ways that you can do that. Number one, I harp on this all the time. If you sat in any of my emotional healing classes, you will hear, if I've ever coached you, you'll know I'm about to say, please curate your social media circles. Please. Please. I will tell you right now, the only reason why I'm still on any social media at all is because I have a mission that the Lord has called me to. And every day when I log on, I, I try to post something that gives life. I do my level best to not send things that are frustrating and upsetting. I do upset people. I know that. But if it's speaking truth and I'm upsetting you, that's on you. That's your situation, not mine. But if I'm not on there with a specific mission and purpose or going to groups where I know that they are life-giving and trying, like I do a devotion in some or some of the different prophetic statements that are out there, um, if I just allow myself to scroll within five minutes, I feel angered. I feel frustrated. I, I have felt hopeless. And if I feel that way, knowing consciously that this is not good for me, I can't imagine how someone who has just swept their mind clean is feeling when they log on to social media. So I'll say it again, curate your social media circle. If you feel the need, if you have to be on, whether it's for your job or you know God's called you to a mission, Sherry, I'm going to call her out just because she's on here. She has given us the most beautiful 21 days worth of devotions. I encourage you to look at her stuff. It's powerful. Like it literally brings tears to my eyes because it's so life-giving. But there's a way if, if you can 
choose, okay, I'm going to follow, you know, Sherry Jones, I'm going to follow this group, or I'm going to follow this oily group because it gives me some really good information. If that is what it takes to help keep your mind clean and clear, friends, do it. Do it. As delightful as these things are and as useful, and it reminds me of how Rome was clean and clear to be able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ way back when, right? It was a perfect time. There was the peace of Rome. It reminds me that we can do so much good with this right now, particularly in the last 14 months, now maybe 13. It has been used for anything but that. No, I shouldn't say that. That's not truth. I'm sorry. It, it's, it, there's, a, there's a battle going on with it. I'll just say that. The second thing is, as far as don't, not, not allowing a mess to descend on your mind would be people in your circle. We talked about this, if you've followed since we did belief and rest and all of that, and I talk about this, I try to work it into every interval and anything I talk about, because I think curating your, your people in your life those who have the most influence is so important. It's so important. And, and I have said this again in every, I think every one of our, our times together, we don't need to make a big show of it on social media and say, I'm, if you're still here, you're so lucky. Right? Like we were just making this, we're cleaning our friend list. What we do is we just mentally say, okay, how much voice do I want to give them? There is an enemy of your souls who's already telling you lies and speaking ugly things over you. You don't need other people doing that. I can assure you. There's this beautiful feature. If you still find yourself needing to be on social media for whatever, you've got a, you've got a mission to do. It's how you get your information, and that's completely acceptable. Obviously, it's your choice. But there's this beautiful feature that Mark Zuckerberg came up with, and it's hide. Hide their post, unfollow, it's so lovely. He's so kind to think of us that way, right? Also, delete comment, so great. Easy, one and done. And we don't, you know, there was a, I shared with a couple of the gals that um, I pray with, and we've talked about this in our emotion classes, I had an opportunity to really walk out something that I have learned and that's just not engaging in negativity anymore when someone you know i i've been cursed on my social media i have been shouted at i have been called all manner of things in the last 14 months and it used to ruffle me um and now i'm just like i just am so sad i just want people to know the freedom that i have and the life that oozes through me and so I had an opportunity to engage with a gal and I could see it wasn't really going in where I thought, okay. And then it just got, it started to get a little off kilter. And so I just blocked and, and it, I, there was no anger by it. I just thought this is not going to give life to my, my friends, the circle that I, I want to keep. It's just a food for thought, everyone. Just you do you. The last part of the not allowing mess to come into your mind this one may take a little bit more cleaning, perhaps a little bit more demoing, but this one is understand your truth, know where you're going to stand, and practice speaking it. It goes back to our affirmations. What I mean by that is um, one of the most hot topic discussions, which I'm like, I'm not going to shy away, whether, you know, wherever you stand on the whole mask issue. But what happens is, is I, I see on both sides, right? So in this situation, you might have someone who yells at you for not having one on. You might have someone who yells at you for having one on or whatever. There's this weird debate. Now, I think I won't even talk about the vaccine debate. But in any case, that can add mess to you. It can make your mind messy. Why? Because you're thinking about it. You're thinking about the other person's opinion. And I'll be very bold and to speak truth to you all and say they are all opinions on both sides. On both sides. I know what I believe is true for me, for my family. I also believe a plant-based lifestyle, not eating beef or anything that's really not even considered food, is right. 
for my family. My mom's husband is an amazing hunter and that he, I was about to say he shoots duck. I don't even know if that's true. I, deer, I know that. My family doesn't eat that, but I certainly wouldn't pick at his house. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't fuss at them for shooting Bambi and eating it. Like that's just dumb. That's not loving them. It's just, frankly, I don't like me. So it's real easy for me. Also, our family has found so much health and life through the way we eat. It's for us. And I share that story because talking about mind mess, when I first became, we first went vegan and now we've moved to more in the middle, more of a vegetarian because we raised chickens for heaven's sakes for their eggs, delish. But when we first did this, I had people tell me that I was abusing my children. I had all kinds of people tell me how unhealthy it was and that we wouldn't, um, where were we going to get our protein? And I wasn't emotionally strong enough to say, uh, all of life is actually created with protein. Protein is the building block of life. So my spinach, I just might have to eat a little more of it than you might have to if you eat cows. That's all. But I wasn't strong enough at that moment. And now... I still have the same comments, although I have people, which is my favorite when I, they, I never lead with it. Somebody else shares it. Oh, Jen, we're in our family. They're vegan. They don't eat meat. Immediately, rather than say, oh, that's interesting. What, what made you do that? It's 100% of the time I've always gotten, oh, I could never do that. I could never eat meat or I could never eat just vegetables. I need my meat. And they give me their list of why they couldn't eat a vegetarian lifestyle. I'm like, it's weird because I didn't ask you, but okay. And so in order to stand in my truth and not allow their mess to descend on me, in my mind, I'm like, okay, I didn't ask you. I don't get offended. I don't get upset. I don't feel like a bad mother because my daughter has never had chicken. That I, We don't eat a Chick-fil-A, even though apparently it's the Lord's food. I, I hear that moving to Texas now. Do you see what I mean? It's a very silly example, but I know it gets deeper than that. I know it does. Don't allow anybody else's mess or the world's mess to, to clutter up your mind again. This number two point is, it was really along with it, but probably our mothers and our grandmothers would say, garbage in, garbage out. It's so basic. Garbage in and garbage out. It goes with our food, what we eat, what we put on our bodies, right? Those of us who use Young Living solely um, for our lotions and our, our hair products and our makeup. You put garbage on your skin, you're going to get garbage coming out of your skin. But it goes with our mind too. One of the areas that I have really been talking to my family about, because we love, we love art of all kinds. I'm just going to say that right now. But we love music. We love movies. We love plays. Um, my mom, she'll laugh because all of my children, I think except for maybe one, love musicals. My husband will sit and watch a good musical with me. We love the symphony. But recently, we have a dialogue about goodness and beauty and truth in the arts, right? And so when we have our earbuds in, I don't know if you guys noticed that um, and now, you know, when the iPhones or whatever smartphones first came out, I would listen to music in my car and just be bop along. And, you know, there's all those jokes about you make up words to songs that don't eat. Like, that doesn't make sense. Like, that one, there's a bathroom on the right. That's actually not how that goes. I actually don't even know. I think it's Bad Moon Rising is a song. I don't actually know the words because in my mind, I'm like, there's a bathroom on the right. You know, that one. Um, I'm going to have to play it now for you or because most of you guys probably don't know what I mean. But when you put it in your earbuds, your ears, you know every word. You hear every emotion, you hear every word. And so when I'm talking to my children, you know, I, I, I used to not really think about their music because we just played and whatever and have it, you know, for Friday night, game night or whatever. But now as I hear certain words, I'm like, wait, what did that say? 
Wait, what? What? What are you listening to? And I'm going to tell you what, for those of you who go to church and those of you who listen to worship songs, some of those are worse than some of the secular songs. And if you take the time to listen to words that say, I'm broken, I'm there, like all these bad things, but God, it's like, I see what you're trying to do. But the more you say, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this, your brain, you all know this. Your conscious mind is just taking like, oh, I must be broken. Oh, I must be hurting. Oh, I'm a sinner. And we're just, right? Versus I'm healed. I'm whole. I'm made righteous. I'm made new. Those, my friends. So it's been interesting to walk my kids through and as we go to church, I, I notice them like not singing along to certain songs because it's like, number one, it's not even a worship song. Number two, it's speaking death over myself. And God has already done so many good things in me that I am not going to ruin it by just singing a song that is not life. Garbage in, garbage out. Uh, movies that you watch, television shows that you see. I tentatively share this example, but I got a whole lot of Facebook trouble from some of my lovely friends years ago for calling out that show, This Is Us. Don't hate me, please, please keep listening. Because I know so many people still love that show. And I'm like, but the only thing I saw after the show would, was, would air was, oh, you're killing me. Oh, this show. Like they would speak all these horrific things over themselves. This show had me so depressed. I'm like, wow. So think about it. All these people are watching this show. And then 2020 hit. I'm like, wow, how's your mind now? I mean, I'm just saying. Garbage in, garbage out. If you want to live in a messy mind, that is your prerogative. But I'm asking. You took, all, those of you watching later, those of you watching now, you took 21 days out of your life to do a mental spring cleaning. Don't let your kids, don't let other people eat crumbs in your beautifully new swept mind. The last thing is have a mental checklist. Seriously. Um, and some of you maybe who aren't planners, and when I say planners, because if I were to call myself a planner, my family would but roll over laughing. What I mean is a planner like using a planner. I'm a planner girl. I love, I love planners. I love the, the blank pages and the endless possibilities. I love writing things out. Mostly though, my planners now consist of prayers and affirmations and maybe a few to-do lists. That's where my mind is at lately. But I would encourage you to have some sort of a planner, whether it's a legal pad. I also have that here, right? Like a little yellow checklist and do a practice whether it's each evening maybe once a week when you have your rest day or just before you go into sabbath that's actually um, as i think about it then that's a good day because just before you want to have your whole spirit mind and body rest wouldn't it be amazing to just do a mental checklist like okay what did i let in my mind this week what was life-giving what maybe wasn't so life-giving and we work through that. There's some things that we just simply can't control. Wouldn't that be lovely if we just could make, you know, have everyone on little puppet strings and everybody did everything we wanted them to do and life was great. But then that wouldn't be fun either. So it's important to have these mental checklists because as I said yesterday, you are all cleaning and sweeping and tidying. And you know what your neighbors around, they're like, they might go, oh, that looks good, but it has zero effect on them. And so you're responsible for you and your mind, just like we're responsible for our property in our area. And so if we make a little checklist, just like you would do on a Sunday for a checklist of things to do in the home or spring cleaning, have a mental checklist. And then if there is something not life-giving that was descending on you or you stumbled into it or it was just whatever, whatever happened, we take our oils. Do you remember the three that I mentioned, right? We have vanilla, we have, uh, or stress away, either one, um, frankincense and lavender. For the aroma freedom technique, we use those to help remove 
negative memories and replace them with good positive memories. And so we just go ahead and walk through that. We take a drop of each, we breathe it in, we come up with everything in our mind that was not life-giving. And we pray, we ask the Lord to release it and clean our mind. And then we move on. We seal it with something like highest potential into the future. Sacred angel. I'm just naming off all the ones on my desk for us. It's gratitude. We just breathe it in. We speak life over us, over our situation, over our job, over our finances, over our relationships. And we just, okay, that's done. I love the idea of a mental spring cleaning because think about this. Probably most of you watching don't have five children. That's, that's not a, a common thing. Maybe you've had children, maybe you've had people over, pets, whatever, but you just clean. I'm just coming up with an example off the top of my head that happened in the last few months. And your daughter who is 17 actually, takes the grape juice out of the fridge and just accidentally drops it. Well, we get the organic kind, so it's glass. You can't get the Welch's, heaven forbid, right? Which would just bounce off. But it was glass and it just went everywhere. And I just said, you know what? We need to move. We, it, that's it. I, we got to move. Like, have you ever spilled something? We spilled olive oil one time in our, one of our kitchens. I'm like, we have to move. It just feels like such a big mess. You think this, or it's going to be sticky forever, right? And so we dive in and everybody's just like, I don't even know how to do it. You know, you just kind of, it's kind of like your mind, like, I don't even know what to, where to start. Well, I started in the beginning. So we did the thing and do it all. And then after about a half hour, it's finally like picked up, all the glasses picked up, all the grape juice is picked up. We thieves clean it. Somebody walks over with bare feet. Ah, it's sticky. Okay, let's do it again. And, you know, we do it again. And, and then all the, it's like, oh, Okay, you don't even, you coming over to my house, you probably could see all other kinds of things that were spilled that we missed, but you wouldn't know that there was grape juice unless you remember that story. It's the same thing when we have something that happens that we're like, wait, what? I didn't allow that. I didn't authorize that. You were not in my circle. What happened? Okay. All right. We need to clean it up. So we take our vanilla or our stress away. We take our frankincense. We take our lavender. We breathe it in, we walk through the process, and we start over. You might have a memory of it like, oh, like that, oh, it's sticky, ah, it's hurting my brain, or oh, I don't, makes me so mad, I feel angry. Okay, now we need to do it again. Let's breathe it in. Let's journal it out. Let's talk to the Lord about it. Let's speak truth. Come on, we can do this. None of you watching either now or later, I know this because I don't think anybody would do this that I know. None of you would drop grape juice on your house, on your floor, or your daughter, or whatever, have it shattered everywhere and go, I'm sorry, I'm going to clean that up. Nobody. Nobody in their right mind would break an entire bottle of Ninja Red on their driveway and just leave it. Now, you might leave the Ningxia because you're like, maybe the birds will take it. <laughs> I can give Nate creation. Just, maybe my dogs will come by and lick it. But you would very likely pick up the pieces. Right? So I'll finish with this because I hear my guineas now yelling at us. If something messes up your mind, don't leave it. It'll become sticky ant crusted grape juice on your floor. If you deal with it, then you have your tools always with you. If you deal with it right then, it will not stay with you. Last year on when we celebrated Resurrection Sunday, we went to, it was the first time we'd gone to church in weeks. And we had to be in the parking lot and I got into an argument. I know I can totally see the shock on your faces that I would actually get in an argument with someone in Massachusetts over COVID stuff. Um, but he was a, a parking lot attendant and we had both of our windows rolled down and I got in trouble because we're only supposed to have one window rolled down. And I was like, 
what? I'm sorry. Pardon? He says, well, you know, COVID and all this. We were still calling it the coronavirus back then. And I said, oh, it doesn't work that way. He's like, well, it can blow through your car. I'm like, what? Um, that's not how things like that work. We can have the window open. He, and he's like, well, I'm a scientist. And he gave me his big spiel. And I was just like, and you know, you guys know, I think I've shared this story with everybody. I said, I have the blood of Jesus, so we're fine. And, but the, the conversation had ruffled me. And especially because I was, I'd come to worship the Lord. And I was like, well, now I can't even worship because this Yahoo ruined it. But I had my oils. I took my freedom oil with me. I had carried that oil everywhere I went in Massachusetts. And I breathed in it, and that took a long time. But it was a good catalyst for me to be able to have this practice. And now I can say it laughing, going, I was totally right. That's not at all how that happened. It's not at all how that worked. But Mr. Scientist with this big Harvard degree was like, yes, I know it worked. Okay, whatever. But a year ago, it was so upsetting. And I was like, oh, I just felt defeated. But I used my tools. I cleaned up the grape juice. I sprayed it. And when that thought came back and it felt sticky and ugly in my mind, I used my oils again and found myself praying for him because obviously he didn't have the same Jesus that I had. So there was that. Does anybody have any questions or comments before we turn off the recording? Anything you want to share? Whoop. Oh, wait, hold on. Nancy, did you, I'm sorry, you muted yourself again. Was that on purpose? There. Am I okay now? Yep, there you go. Um, yeah, I noticed today in church there were some words that uh, I thought, oh no, I'm not going to sing that one. <laughs> and I thought of you and, you know, church, you're right. We've got to watch those songs. And I had never really thought of that before. Yeah, interesting. I'm glad that it came to your mind today. Mm hmm. Okay, um, for the next, normally we would start a new interval beginning um, tomorrow, but this week is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and I want to take some time with my family, and I want to not think about extra. So we're going to take a pause. I'll leave up all of the 21-day um, interval for this mental spring cleaning, because I think there was also somebody that maybe felt like they wanted to go back. I mean, you can always see it on the, on the website. Um, but we're going to go ahead and just pause on this week. We'll begin again on Monday, April 5th. Um, and I'll be honest too, as I've been praying, I thought, I don't even know what we should do next. We have a list of things, but I like to see what's happening in our world and see what, where do we need? Um, I have a feeling the sound, this might sound a little weird to some of you, but I think it's going to be 21 days of miracles and or breakthroughs. And um, I know when I say that, sometimes people expect like, wait, like raising the dead kind of miracles. And I don't mean that. I think I want us to get to a place that we see our breath as a miracle. And I want to have a time to, this, I think this is it actually. I want us to have a time, if you choose to join in, of reflecting back on what's been done in your life. I have a sweet friend that talked about um, lions and bears versus the Goliaths. We think so much about the Goliaths in our life, and we don't make a lion and bear list. And so I have a feeling that's what we'll do in some breakthroughs and really just walking through what would it look like to believe for a breakthrough of any kind. Whether you know, I know a lot of people are praying for a lot of different things, and they could just use a win. Right. And so I, I think that's what we'll do. Let me pray on that. And we'll, um, you'll see a post in the next couple of days about that. So you can kind of get your mind wrapped around it. So I want to thank everybody for joining me on this 21 days. And remember, if this is not for you or you're like, man, I want to tap out or turn off the notifications. No harm, no foul. I mean, I get it. That's what this is for. 
it's just a group that you can pick and choose what you want to walk through. Um, I know coming in the summer, I'm going to switch over to uh, 21 days of swapping out coffee. So all of us coffee drinkers are, if you want, um, we're going to do like teas and iced teas, and we'll talk about the benefits of that. So that I'm really looking forward to that. So have an amazing, if you're choosing to celebrate Passover, have an amazing Passover, have a wonderful um, feast week, and I will see you guys next time.